Welcome to my January challenge, which is finger painting. Um, I'm just going to uh, get my hands in it, basically. This is modeling paste. And I am going to basically just apply some modeling paste all over this canvas with my hands. And then I'm going to let it dry overnight. And then I will paint over it with my fingers. So just uh, enjoy the next uh, few Just adding a few stipples with my finger to give some texture. All right, it's been a day and the modeling piece has dried. So now I am pouring out some different colors onto palette paper, which is basically just like wax paper. It's paper that allows you to pour your paint on there so that it doesn't uh, soak in and you can work with it. So I have Permanent Red Violet, uh, Quinacridone Magenta, and Golden's Medium. Magenta. I am dipping my fingers into each puddle of paint and I am going to work it onto this piece of wood which I've, you know, got the texture. So I'm just basically dabbing my fingers on here to put the paint into the crevices and I will continue to cover with each of the different colors of pink and then I'll be moving on to some other colors. This particular pink is Amsterdam's Permanent Red Violet. And 
I'm applying it in sort of a shape that follows the shape of the circle that that this piece of wood is. I'm not quite sure what this is meant to be. It is all part of the process. It is, we are just here doing the thing. It is not about um, the outcome for, for me on this one. It's more about the process of just feeling the paint and just experimenting and seeing what uh, I get out of it and what it inspires after that. So this pink is just quinacridone uh, magenta that we just saw. And now we're going to see some of the Golden's medium magenta here in a second. I am wiping my fingers after each application just in an effort to not mix the paint on my glove. I'd rather mix the paint on, on the canvas. And the modeling piece isn't like hard as a rock. It is definitely holds its shape. Um, but if, if I were to push too hard or, or scrub back and forth, I might lose some of the texture. So I'm doing just a quick, uh, light padding motion. So now I'm just going to, um, move to the next color. I have Amsterdam Azo Orange and Golden's Quidacrinone Nicolazo Gold. Both of these look far more yellow on the camera than at least when I'm editing this than they really are, but um, we're going to come in here and I am going to mix in a little bit and I hope I don't get undesired muddy colors, but I am trying to kind of create um, a gradual movement from one shade to the next and we'll see how I do on that. Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold, which is just slightly darker and more rusty uh, color of orange than the Azo Orange. It's coming out a little weak, and so I'm giving the bottle another shake. It's mixed from the uh, fluid acrylic, so I think it, it had settled a bit. So hopefully as I do this, I'm going to be able to come in here with some more um, sharp color because it's really a beautiful color. Again, this finger painting challenges has been a bit of a, um, a reason for me to overthink. Um, I thought, oh, let me do something super cool. Some concept of using my fingers in paint that is just so crazy cool. And I'll show you at the end of this video that I had a few unsuccessful rounds at that. And um, when I decided to just keep it simple, stupid, so to speak, I came up with this concept of adding a little texture and then basically just finger painting from there. So now I'm coming in with some greens. I have olive, pale olive from Windsor Newton and hooker's green, which I think was Li Liquitex Basics and phthalo green, which is, could be either Amsterdam or Liquitex Basics. I use both. I think that particular bottle was Liquitex Basics. So I'm coming in here with the Pale Olive, which is a little bit more, I believe this one is a fairly opaque color. The Thalo Green, however, is not. It's fairly transparent. So I'm gonna put that one on last in the hopes of both doing some 
some mixing between the different greens and also potentially having some layering looks at the end um, where it looks like the phthalo green is sort of layered over top and you can see through uh, to some of the other color. So I'd love to hear what you think about this process, just the idea of just getting down there with your fingers and creating it, it actually is very um, freeing to get in here and do something a little different and really be, you know, not to sound too corny, but one with your piece um, just by really, you know, using your fingers. So here's my piece and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I imagine there will be more to come on this particular item. I am going to go ahead and show you some of the first few um, attempts at this idea of finger painting for this challenge where I decided to incorporate the use of silicone to achieve certain cells and then I attempted to do finger dipping to create sort of floral, floral patterns within the piece you'll see on these pieces that in some cases I didn't get anything that even resembled a floral pattern. The paint just did not hold the shape of any of the finger dips. And I'd love to hear your suggestions. So thanks for being here. Continue watching the rest of the art lab with us and uh, we'll see you again. Come back and paint with me again.